Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. This is a really simple one. It just says Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is coming up. It is February 21st. So that is literally about two months from now. So now is when you wanna start making those designs and getting them up. It is very popular every year. There's a lot of t-shirts that sell and a lot of different ways that you can go with this. Um, this particular design uses a couple different techniques that I wanted to show you. One we've done many times before. The other one is kind of trying to make those letters um, sort of look uneven like they are right now. So the letters are kind of fun and going every which way. And then we just go ahead and do some glitter masks over the top of each letter to get the, sort of that sparkly look. So if this is something that you would like to learn about, please do stick around. So as usual, we're gonna go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and I will be designing on black today. So I'm just gonna go ahead, click my blank canvas and up in the left-hand corner, I'm gonna go ahead and select my background color and I will be selecting black. Uh, now for today's video, we're gonna be doing a Mardi Gras, uh, Mardi Gras design. I'm actually gonna do a few videos on Mardi Gras designs because Mardi Gras is coming up in a few months. It is on February 21st. So now's the time you wanna start designing and getting those up so you have them up in time for people to buy them for Mardi Gras. Um, so this one is going to be primarily text-based, but I'm gonna show you some, some unique ways that we can go about um, creating a fun design for Mardi Gras. So I'm gonna start by putting some text on here and I am just gonna go ahead and hit T on my keyboard. It's gonna pull up a text box right there. Now I'm gonna be writing Mardi Gras, but I'm gonna be using a different text box for each letter and I can show you why in a minute. So for the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit M. And I'm gonna move this up and out of the way, maybe make it a little bit bigger just so I can see it. And then I'm gonna hit another text box. So I hit T again, and that's gonna be my A. And I'm just gonna repeat this process until I have what I want spelled, T. There's my ID, and T again, and then I hit I, so there's Marty, almost there, hit T again, new text box, there's my G, move that out of the way, text box again is gonna be R, text box again, A, and then one more time, text box again, and that's gonna be S, and so here it says Mardi Gras. Um, so the cool thing about doing each letter as its own text box is I can, you know, move the letters around so they're kind of something like this. So they don't have to be necessarily level or they don't have to be straight. I can take them and I can, you know, rotate them a little bit. And so it's a way you can kind of get this sort of cool look to your text is just by having them be individual letters like that. And so now I do wanna pick a fun font and I do want them all to be the same font for this and something you know, bold and fun. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. There's a few different ways you can search. You can go ahead and search for bold. You can search for fun. Um, either of those might be good. Let's just start with bold and see what comes up. So it's gonna give me my results for bold. And right away, this one looks kind of fun. So let me see what that one looks like. Okay, so that's cool, that's an option. Not necessarily loving it, so we'll just keep looking. And I want something that, again, is a little bit different. There's an M, just kind of plain. And so scroll down, make sure you try, you know, several different fonts to kind of find what you like. That one looks kind of fun. So you keep scrolling, look for some fun things. I do like that one there might be cool. If I go down to the bottom, it'll say change all. I can hit change all and it's gonna change all of them. And so that might be a fun one. I can do that one here too. I don't know why it didn't include that one. So now they're all in the same, um, they're all in the same font. If you like that font, you can always keep looking, keep one of them up and check some of the other ones. Some of these are a little fun. That one looks nice. That one definitely looks a little different. And again, you can try them all out and see how they look. So that looks kind of fun too. I like the way that the letters are a little bit different. I might stick with this one. Let me try one more. What was the other one I liked? I liked this one. That one's not quite as fun. So I'm gonna go back 
and I'm gonna pick this font right here. So now I've got my font picked out nice and big, and now I'm gonna go ahead and arrange my letters. So to do this, I want them all to be about the same size to begin with, and then I want them to fill the page. So a few things that I consider when I'm doing this, one, making sure that they're nice and big. Initially, I'm just gonna go ahead and align them and make them the same size. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just, there we go, try to make them all about the same size here. Okay, so to make sure that they're definitely all the same size, I can just click on any one of them and I see the size up here, it's 773. And so if I click on all of them, they should all be that same 773. If they're not, you know, I can, you know, adjust or I can always just write in 7073 because that might be easier if I just did that one for all of them. So I might just do that, put 773 for all of them. I'll make sure that they're all the same size. Perfect. Good, so those are all the same size. I can do the same thing down here now. So if I liked that size, I might just go 773 for all of these two. All right, so now all of my boxes are the same size. And so now I can start kind of playing with the way that this looks. So what I do wanna do is make them a little offset, make them a little bit angled. I'm actually gonna move these down so I've got some room to work. So I'm gonna start at the top with the Marty. Um, and it doesn't matter where it is in my page because once I've got it relative how I want each letter to be, I can group them all together and then I can move them separately if I want to. So it doesn't matter where you've got this located for now. Just go ahead and pick where you want each letter to kind of sit relative to the other. So if you want the M to kind of tilt a little bit, you don't want it to tilt too much, but if you want to make it just like a degree or two off just so that it looks a little different, you can do it that way. Again, I can you know, play with these. They don't all have to be the same angle or the same height or anything like that. Um, so really small, that's only about a two degree tilt. But you can see how I just got these looking a little bit, you know, a little messy. And if you want to make sure that everything looks like it's relatively straight in terms of the line, we can always pull up some uh, rulers and guides. So the easiest way to do this would be to go over to file on the top left hand corner, click that. You can go down to where it says show rulers and guides. Go ahead and click that. Now it's going to pull your rulers and guides up on the top and sides of the page. So this way, if I want to pull a guideline down, I can. So a nice guideline might give me my lower point and maybe my upper point. So something like that. So maybe I want these bottom ones to kind of line up with the bottom line and I want the upper ones to kind of line up with the upper line. That makes sure that everything is relatively still about the same height. So I'm still going in a good straight line. I'm not like tilting down or tilting up or anything like that. And so that's one way that we can play with it. And so you do want to take your time, make sure that you get this looking nice. Um, you know, get little tilts in if you want it. Something like that looks kind of fun. Or if I want this maybe tilting in a little bit, the other one's tilting in, maybe I want that one tilting in a little too. I mean, that looks kind of cool. I don't know if I like that as much. So just sort of play with how they all look. So once you got it the way you like it, so I think that looks kind of good. I'm gonna go down and do the same thing with the second line here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this down quite a bit. That way I can group these together, I can group this together, and then I can center it. And so you'll see how I do this. But I'm gonna go ahead and start lower on this one. I'll do the same little tilt and the same little offset for this too. And again, something like that I'm trying to decide how I like it or I could do that one lower too so it looks more like the top one so the first letter is high and the second letter is low that might actually work better that way it's a little more uniform so something like that looks cool maybe I actually want to 
tilt the A the other way. So something like that. It's just meant to be kind of funny offset, not even. So that's how I'm going to do it. So that looks fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and group all of these together. So it's going to be a little easier sort of to do it that way. Oops. Once I have it how I want it. So I can click anywhere outside of what I want to group. So I'm just going to go ahead, click with the left, hold that down, and I'm going to drag over everything. And now these are all grouped. If I come to the top right hand corner, you can see it'll say group up here. I click that. And now this is one big group that I can move together. So now is when I can worry about, you know, if I wanted to center it, um, something like that. Now I can put it sort of wherever I want. Same thing I can do down here. Once I know that I've got this the way I want it, and I'm still kind of looking at it and I'm not sure about this A. The A is bothering me. So maybe I like it a little bit more like that. In fact, maybe I want the S to sort of tilt the other way. Okay. All right. So something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and click outside the image, hold down, drag over everything. I will group this together. And so now I have my design that says Mardi Gras. Now I can put this up as close or as far away from the top one as I want, make sure it's centered, something like that. So now I think that looks pretty good. Now that could be a design in and of itself. It's kind of boring. It's just sort of white. I'm not sure I love it. So to make it a little bit more fun, I want to do some pop of color. Now we could go through and make each of these letters a different color and just do standard color, or we can do a clipping mask and make it look like it's a little glittery. It won't be glitter, obviously it's just printed, but you can sure, you know, give it more of a sparkly glittery sort of look. And I think that that would be really fun for Mardi Gras. So if I'm going to do that as a frame, I'm going to go ahead and just save this whole thing. And I'm just going to put Mardi Gras frame and frame, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. So I'll hit share. I'll come over to where it says download. It's a PNG. I'm going to leave the size alone. I'm going to click transparent background and I'm going to download it. And I will give it one sec. Oop. Perfect. And so now I'm going to have my frame. And so now if I want to go ahead and think about putting different colors on here, let's go ahead and find some Mardi Gras colors. So we're going to go over to the left hand corner where the tabs are on the side. I'm going to click elements. And then right here is a good place to find Mardi Gras stuff. So if you do Mardi Gras search, you're going to find all sorts of different things. I can go to graphics, I can put see all, and you'll see that the big main colors here are going to be the purple, the yellow, and the green. Those are all the Mardi, Mardi Gras colors. And so this is what I'm going to try to be matching as best as possible. So an easy way just to make sure that I get around about the right colors that I want or about the right shades that I want is to pick any image that has the colors I want. And I'm just going to sort of put it down in the corner for reference. That way I know sort of what I'm looking for is these colors right here. And so now I'm going to do a search for sort of glitter. And so I'm going to start with, let's go purple glitter. Oops, purple glitter. And right now we're on graphics. You could also do photos. You're going to have really fun glittery looks either way. And so you're going to try to find something that looks close to this. And there's a lot of different glitters. And of course we can always play with them. It depends how much contrast you want. If you want it to be a fine glitter versus more of a coarse glitter. I like getting these little, you know, kind of white sparkle bits in it. So I'm thinking maybe this one looks pretty cool. I like that. I'm going to shrink this one down a little bit and it's pretty close to the color I want already. If I wanted to lighten it up a little bit, I can go to edit image and here's where I could go ahead and play with the brightness. If I wanted it to be just a little bit brighter, maybe or maybe the contrast, if I wanted to really make the little white spots pop, if I wanted it to be more saturated, I could come this way, less saturated, I could come that way. So here's where if you wanted to, you could go ahead and play with that just a little bit. I will be making it just a little bit lighter so it's not too dark, I want it to pop on the black, of course. So that's gonna be the purple that I go with. And so now we're gonna do it again, and I'm gonna find the green that I want. I'm gonna hit green glitter. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for a green that looks pretty close to this. I actually like these top two here. This one again is very similar to the purple one in terms of the sparkles and where they are. So that might be a good one to go with. Again, it looks like the glitter is matching up pretty well. 
If I want to again, I can go ahead, edit image, and make that a little bit brighter if I wanted to. Bring up the contrast if I wanted to, bring up the saturation if I wanted to, sort of just play with it, make sure it looks good. And then one more time, we just sort of need that yellow glitter. Um, so you can do yellow or gold glitter. Let's try yellow. And so here's our yellow. It's gonna look kind of golden. And so there's some fun ones. This one's got more of a sort of fade on it. I don't necessarily want the fade. I still want it to be pretty light. So I might have to search a little bit to find the yellow glitter that I like. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. This one's a little bit more yellow versus a little bit more gold. So it just depends what we're going for. Got a lot of fun sparkles. I want it to kind of look like these in terms of the coarseness. So some of these have a little bit more of a blur to them and these are a little bit sharper. So I am looking for something that looks like it goes. So something a little bit sharper, but still golden. That one looks pretty good. It's got that gold look to it. Again, I might want to make that one a little bit more yellow, more saturated. Let's see if I come up to edit image. If I pull the saturation up on this and the brightness up on this, you know, that might look okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go with these three. So these are gonna be my three cover masks. And so these are the glitters I'm gonna use. So I can get rid of that now. That was just for my reference. And I can close this now. So my goal now would be to cover up the letters here with my masks here. And you can do that however you want. So I could make one word one color, one word another color. I can do individual letters each color. I can make words half one color, half another color. So this is where you can play and be as creative as you want. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just make every other letter a different color. So I'm gonna start with this purple. So I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna try to cover up just this M, okay? It doesn't matter if it goes off the page, I just wanna make sure that it's covering just the M. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and control D because I am gonna wanna use this again because I'm gonna need to cover up just the D here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it down until it's covering just my D but nothing else. And again here, this one I can right click and I can bring to front so it's on top. Okay, so then Next, let's go ahead, we can do, let's do the yellow one next. So I'm gonna do the same thing here so you can see this one is going to be my yellow. I'm gonna go ahead, shrink it down because I want to cover up just my A, my whole A, but without getting any of the R. Now this might be tough if, for example, the letters are too close together. So if I bring that way down, that might work in terms of getting just that A there. It looks like I might be missing out on the bottom. You might have to be a little bit more detailed. So I might have to like zoom in, for example. And if I'm just missing the bottom of the A, I can always, let me go ahead and send this to back. Oops, I can always take this, duplicate it, bring it way down and then I can pull it out under the bottom. And so now it's covering the whole thing. And so you can sort of play with your shapes that way too. Okay. So then the next one I'm going to want would be my green here. And then of course this would be gold too. So again, I can control D one more time and move my gold one over here. It doesn't matter if it goes off the page. It just has to cover my, my letters. And so now I'm going to bring my green one up. I'm gonna rotate it, make it nice and small, and bring it on up. And so now it's gonna cover my R. Oops. And if you accidentally move something you didn't wanna move, before you try to put it back where it was, go ahead and use the back button to make sure that it actually goes back exactly where it was, okay? You don't wanna mess up your locations of anything because we've already downloaded our frame, so send to back here. So everything needs to stay how it was within the frame. So this one I'm gonna have to do sort of what I did with the yellow because they do overlap a little bit. 
perfect. And I'm going to have to, again, control D, bring this one right up there. I'm going to have to bring it right over to the top there. I'm going to, of course, take this and send T back. And perfect. So now it looks like I've got every letter completely covered with uh, the, the masks that I want. So now I'm just going to repeat the same process here. And so doing the same general colors again, I'm going to go ahead and start with green this time. So I'm going to hit my green. I'll control D to duplicate it. And then I'm just going to bring my green right down and try to cover up my G. And that looks pretty good right there. And I'm going to take my purple, same thing, control D, and bring a purple down to cover up my R. You may need to, again, play with the sizes a little bit, but that looks pretty good. Then I've got my yellow one here, control D. I'm going to bring the yellow over to cover up this A. Nice. And then one more, I just need the green again, control D, and I'll bring the green over in front of the S and perfect. So now this is going to be my mask. So I had my Mardi Gras frame up top. Now I can just retitle this Mardi Gras and I can put mask if I want to. Oops, Whoa, don't need the F. So it says Mardi Gras mask. And now I can just go ahead and download this. So I can hit share, I can hit download. Um, you do not need a transparent background. You can, it really doesn't matter because only the, the stuff covering the letters is going to show. Um, so I don't usually click transparent, but if you do, it's not a big deal. Leave it as a PNG, leave the size alone, and just click download. And so it, now it is downloading our mask. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump over to Photopea. I use Photopea primarily for clipping masks and whenever I wanna do some warped text, it is great, it is easy, it is fast, and most importantly, it is free. So you don't have to log in, you don't have to create an account. All you have to do is type Photopea into your browser and it should open up a page that looks just like this. From here, I can click this middle button where it says open from computer. It should pull up your downloads. And from your downloads, you can go ahead and just open what you had as your frame. So I'm opening my Mardi Gras frame and it'll take a second, but it'll open it. And so here is my Mardi Gras frame. And now from this page, if you go up to the top left hand corner where it says file and you click on that drop down uh, menu will appear and you're going to go three spaces down to where it says open and place. Click on that. It'll pull up your downloads again. This time you hit your mask and you open that and it's going to open my mask right on top. Over here on the right hand side, you're going to see two layers, your background layer, and that was your frame, and then your top layer here, this is your mask, and so this is what it should look like. From here, you'll go back up to the top, and where it says file, you're going to move over to your right until you get to layer. If you click on layer, you'll get another drop down menu. About halfway down, you're going to find clipping mask, so you can go ahead, click, click, on clipping mask and it'll do all the work for you and there you go so here is my clipping mask right on top of my Mardi Gras frame and so from here all I have to do is export this so again if I come to the top left hand corner where it says file click that about halfway down you'll see export as and if you move over to your right it'll say PNG that's what you want to click if you give it a second, it's going to pull up a box that looks like this. It's going to have the name up here. Now it's going to be named whatever the first um, frame that you put in was. So it says Mardi Gras frame right here. I can get rid of frame if I want to retitle this and I can put Mardi Gras glitter. It's still 4500 by 5400. It's still a PNG quality here. You can leave it at 100, but occasionally you'll find some images that are so detailed and large that you won't be able to reopen them on Canva. If that is the case, all you have to do is bring this quality down just a little bit. If I bring it down to 96 or 95, that will usually do it and I have no problems opening from there. So I can go ahead and hit save and it's just going to save this and then I can jump right back over to Canva to finish up my design. So I'll come right back over to Canva. And so you can kind of see what I did here. I'm just going to open a new page so that you can see. And on this new page, I'm going to go ahead and put what I just made in Photopea. So I'll come over to the left hand corner and these tabs where it says uploads. This is where I'm going to upload the design I just made. I can click upload file. My downloads will come up. I'm going to pick my glitter one and I'm going to give it a second to upload. 
perfect. And once it's uploaded, I can just go ahead and click on it. It's gonna pull it up to my uh, page. And so here it is on my page now with an awesome clipping mask. And from here, I can go ahead, place it anywhere I want, center it, you know, do whatever I want with it. And I can also use photo effects on it now. So if, for example, I wanted to put an outline around this, maybe I wanted white all the way around it, I could. If I just wanna leave it as is, cause I think it looks pretty good, I could do that. Um, if I wanna put any effects on it now, now would be a great time to do that. Using effects, I might want to, you shrink it down a little bit so I've got some room to work. Maybe for this one, I'll go ahead and put a frame around it just to make sure that the letters pop. So occasionally I will do this. I'll hit the glow on the shadow feature and I'll just put a little white frame around it just because I wanna make sure that if it's on a nice dark shirt, I can still see like the purples really good. Also, if I put it on a purple shirt, I wanna be able to see it as well. So if I put a little white frame around it, that will be good for making sure that everything pops real nice. I don't have to have it be very big. I'm gonna use a size 10 and apply, and I'll give it a second to finalize, and it's just gonna put a little white outline around the whole thing. And so it'll take a while, it'll, it'll smooth it all out, but that way we'll be able to see it really well on any color we put it on. Now from here, again, if I wanted to add, you know, something, you know, fun to make it more Mardi Gras themed, I can come back over to the left-hand side, hit my elements button. And again, now I can do a search for Mardi Gras again. And right now I'm on photos, I can go to graphics and there's gonna be lots of fun graphics that you can play with. So some of the popular ones would be something like putting the crown on top of it. I've seen a lot of those where you just take the crown, stick it on top of the M, you might have to shrink it way down. Something like this, I can angle it, boom. Mm, something like that there. So now I got the crown on top of that. And then if I wanted to put beads or feathers or a mask, anything fun that you wanted to do, you know, you could totally do that now. And so you can have a lot of fun then adding some flair to it if you wanted to. Um, again, masks are popular, beads are popular, feathers are popular. So I could put some feathers, some confetti, anything like that might look good. And so you can be, again, as creative as you want to with this but this is just the first of many fun Mardi Gras themed designs I like to do. And so as I'm looking down, there's just like lots of fun things here. There's like a little thing here. Matter of fact, I could put that right there. And this one's cool. I can change the color so I can make sure that this purple matches the purple I have. I can use my eyedrop feature here and try to match the same purple. And I can do that with everything too. I can take the green and again, try to match my green. And so it's always good to have matching colors. You know, with glitter, you're gonna get lots of different shades, so it's okay. I think that looks pretty good. The gold matches pretty close. And so that's pretty fun design right there. Anything else you wanna add to it, again, you can. You can be really um, detailed and have like just a lot to it, or you can keep it pretty simple. Um, depends what kind of design you're going for. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it pretty simple since I kind of showed you the technique I wanted to. I can go ahead, highlight everything here and group it together again. So if I hit group, now the crown and the little cane thing is gonna stay right there. And now I can bring it up towards the top of my page. I can try to center it as best I can. So I'm getting something like that. And so there is my cool Mardi Gras design. I'm gonna go ahead, retitle this, and I can just put Mardi Gras glitter. Again, I can download it now. So this one I'm downloading. This does need to be a transparent background because we're gonna be putting it on products. I'm gonna keep it as a PNG. Um, here it says select pages. So for this one, I just want page two. That's the page I'm on now. I can hit done and I can hit download and it is ready to go and put on any kind of shirt tank top, hat, if it's a printed hat, um, any kind of product that you want, stickers are great too, anything, water bottles for Mardi Gras. And so it's perfect. And I'm gonna show you uh, several more Mardi Gras themed designs coming forward, just because now is the time that you would wanna start designing for those we're about two months away. 
So if you have any questions about this particular technique, you can go ahead and put it in the comment section below. If there's anything else that you would like to see or questions that you have about anything, also go ahead, put them in the comment section below. I do try to get back to them as quickly as I can. I hope you guys are having a great quarter four. I know it's almost over, so I hope you've made some really good sales and you're looking forward to 2023 and you know getting ready for all the upcoming uh, niches that will be very popular. So take care. <laughs> That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.